Welcome everyone to the Drive Less, Do More launch party. Woo! I'm Casey Gilbert, Executive Director of Portland Downtown. Uh, thank you for being here today as we introduce the community to Drive Less, Do More in partnership with the City of Portland, Greater Portland Metro Bus, the Northern New England Passenger Rail Authority, Amtrak Down Easter, and the Bicycle Coalition of Maine, Portland International Jet Port. They were all of our collaborators throughout the development of the campaign. So let's give them a round of applause for their partnership. So the impetus for the Drive Less, Do More campaign was an advocacy letter that Portland Downtown drafted in 2016, urging the city of Portland to look at ways to improve the transportation landscape We've been delighted to work on many action items in this advocacy letter, including a parking study and this very campaign that we're here about today. Bringing in a wide range of partners and conducting a community-wide survey helped us to inform the direction of Drive Less, Do More. I also want to recognize our expanded group of collaborators, uh, including those partners who you'll visit today at the Transportation Fair including Greater Portland Council of Governments, Go Maine and the Maine Turnpike Authority, uh, Shuttle Bus Zoom, and others. So we recognize that there's many organizations doing good work in the realm of transportation, and we want to thank and applaud them for their efforts. So please join me in thanking all those who contribute in Portland. So national and global trends all point to growing urban centers. What that means for cities and metro regions is that we need to be proactive in planning for growth. This includes working together on issues such as housing policy, preparing for the effects of climate change, and of course, improving public transit and reducing our dependence on automobiles. We know that not everyone can ditch their car, but there are many who can choose alternatives, maybe just one day a week or perhaps every day. Today we welcome you to learn more about the wide variety of options we have in Portland, from trails and bicycling to buses and trains and even boats, big boats. There are so many ways to travel without it being a single passenger vehicle trip. And when you choose these alternatives, you'll find that you'll have more time to connect with people, to catch up on emails, to read a good book, or just enjoy the view. Well, I'm here with the executive director of the downtown Portland, um, Casey Gilbert. Hello, Casey. Hi, good morning. Thanks well, for being here. This is so exciting. Now, what, if, what are you calling this event? So this is our Drive Less, Do More launch party. Mm -hmm. And this is a marketing campaign that we've been working on with the city of Portland and other transit partners to bring awareness about all of the modes of transit in the Portland region and to get people to think about how they're commuting downtown and how those modes of transportation are connected. That's exactly right, and we can always work to improve their connectivity so that the end user has a smooth experience and that they want to and are incentivized to take those modes of transit more frequently. And I've noticed people are doing that. I mean, you see the buses with the bikes on the front um, coming from all over, and, and I know that the bus uh, system has expanded beyond um, what they originally were going out almost to Brunswick maybe I'm not sure yeah it's excellent to see like the breeze is the one that you're talking about smaller buses going north of the city bringing commuters in back and forth and then of course they got USM on board so now we have college students taking the bus Portland high school students taking the bus so we're also encouraging this whole new generation of transit riders so it's very exciting yeah more people are biking more people are walking it's good to see um, you know, as we see changes in climate, changes in how cities are, density, housing, all of that, our transportation system is intrinsic to helping us grow, uh, but in a smart way. Right. And Portland, we're lucky. Portland is a walkable city. You can get, I mean, it's not very big, the, the, the peninsula anyway. And once you get here, you can walk anywhere. 
It is another project that we worked on with the University of Southern Maine was a series of walking tour brochures. So again, encouraging people to walk around the city, look up, take in our beautiful architecture and discover some places you've never been. But we're really excited to have a bunch of different partners here today so people can explore um, different transit options, get to know our organizations, pick up some great swag and enter some raffles. So. And I know that um, some of the nonprofits like um, Greater Portland Landmarks and uh, Maine Historical, they're, they're offering walking tours more and more all the time in the city that connect to all of this. And I, I mean, I think it's amazing. Yes, we have a wonderful city and it's so good to see other organizations um, all contributing to the beautiful fabric of our downtown. So I'd like to introduce Natalie Bogart from Nepper Down Easter to say a few words. Thank you so much, Casey. Hello, everyone. I'm Natalie Bogart. I am the marketing director for the Northern New England Passenger Rail Authority slash the Amtrak Down Easter, and I'm so glad to be here today. It has been a great pleasure working alongside the city of Portland in the Portland Downtown District and all of our partners on this great campaign. Whether you're a daily commuter or just an occasional traveler, the train is a mode of transit that can get you where you need to go. For those who live north of Portland, you can hop on the train in Brunswick or Freeport and enjoy an early morning commute into Portland. For those that live in Portland and want to travel to Boston for work or play, we can get you there too. The Amtrak Down Easter has stops throughout Maine, so if you haven't gotten on board, I encourage you to check out AmtrakDownEaster.com and learn where we can take you. Traveling and commuting by train is a great alternative or a complement to the automobile travel. Well, I'm with Natalie Bogart, with the marketing director of Amtrak Down Easter. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. What an exciting day for you. It is an exciting day. This has been a project that's been a long time in the works, and we're super excited to roll it out today, encouraging the residents and visitors to Portland to drive less and do more in this beautiful city. Yeah, and I know your your marketing reach goes way beyond the state, um, bringing people in on the Down Easter and, and trying to get them to get off and walk. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing to make that happen. Well, we just finished um, a very successful Train to Maine campaign where we encourage people in the greater Boston market to leave their car at home and to come to Maine and explore not just Portland, but all of our fabulous station communities. Um, we just came off of a record-breaking August. We transported over 60,000 people, and it's the best month that we've ever had. So we're really excited about what we're doing to bring more people to the state of Maine. We've developed a few new um, passes. So we have a Discover Maine Pass, which is 10 trips within a seven-day period for only $19, which is really designed for the residents of Maine to get out and explore car-free, but also for tourists to have a great opportunity to maybe hub in Old Orchard Beach, but explore Freeport or come to Portland and enjoy all the great things that we have going on. That's wonderful. And, you know, with the climate conference going on in New York right now and everybody talking about alternate transportation because we are all w wanting to get away from our cars and, and help in some way and this is a great way to do it. Absolutely, we look forward to be being part of that solution. Um, we look forward to being part of the workforce solution and we look forward to exposing more young Mainers to alternate modes of transportation. So I think that the, the Down Easter is positioned really well for the goals of this administration and for the um, next 10 years for the growth of the state of Maine. And you've expanded your line in Maine or are planning to? We have expanded our line in Maine, so we're operating all five round trips daily now to Freeport and Brunswick. We have 10 trains a day that go between um, Brunswick and Boston. We're looking at a pilot program to expand weekend seasonal service between Brunswick and Rockland. So we have a lot of really exciting projects um, in the works right now. Yeah. And do you offer fall you know, trips on the Down Easter, is that? Um... We do, what we do is we um, strategically develop itineraries to encourage people to get out and see the beautiful foliage. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the great trips, it's just a quick little luncheon, but we encourage people to take the train from Maine down to the UNH Durham stop and they can have lunch with all sustainable farm to table food, a delicious ice cream and then hop back on. But it's a great way to just ride part of our 
gorgeous route and experience the foliage. So it's a fun little trip. I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and Come and on. and right well riding the train is a romantic thing too. I mean it takes you back in time. So there's certainly a nostalgia to it and we really try to position ourselves as modern public transportation, but there is a nostalgia to riding trains. Families love it, children love it, and it is a great way to go. So and come there, on down. And there are senior discounts if you're a grandparent. Senior discount, <laughs> 65 and older, half price every day. So you'll never pay more than $30 round trip. Good morning. It's my uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, I want to thank Natalie and Casey for their comments. As uh, I was uh, introduced by Natalie, I'm the city's economic development director. Uh, before I start my remarks, I'd like to uh, recognize Council, City Council Blinda Ray uh, for attending this event. I know we've got some city staff here as well. Um, Christine Gramando I saw earlier. Uh, I think former planning director Jeff Levine I saw in the background as well. Um, but um, we are thrilled to work on this project. Um, it's important from a partnership standpoint that uh, we bring everybody together. Um, we can't do anything by ourselves. We do much more collectively, but improving the transportation landscape of the Portland re uh, region is a critical priority for us. This coalition has come together not only to uh, support marketing, alternative modes of transportation, but to also collaborate on joint investment opportunities. I also want to recognize WARP and WEP for their, that's the marketing firm that's behind the program for all of their collective creativity and energy. Uh, so please join me in a round of applause for our marketing support. The city over a number of years has been working on improving quality of life in Portland, including our comprehensive plan process, improving uh, what we call mobility technology which is another way of saying uh, traffic signals with smart technology along Forest Avenue and Franklin Street are improving traffic flow. Um, we've also added bike lanes, bicycle parking. We've implemented a passport parking app. And um, I should give a shout out for some of the more corporate uh, headquarters that we brought to the city. Wex uh, is one such company. They have purchased three shuttles that they're operating and they're transiting their employees in from South Poland. So we're very proud of the fact that we're uh, supporting and uh, encouraging transit op opportunities. We have ongoing transit related uh, support through our partners in Greater Portland Metro and the Greater Portland Council of Governments. We are committed to kind of maintaining Portland's vitality. We feel our secret sauce, if you will, is a pedestrian friendly landscape. So. Our partners are committed to that uh, level of uh, partnership. I'm with Denise Beck, the Marketing Director of Portland Metro. Hi, Denise. Hi. It's great to see you and be sitting on the bus with you. Oh, this is great. This is one of our brand new buses. We just got six new buses this month, and this is one of the new ones that we have here. It smells new and it, it looks beautiful. Yeah, well, what's really great is um, this is one of the buses that we're introducing automatic voice announcements in. So if somebody's on one of the new buses, they'll be able to hear where the next stop is. Oh. So that's pretty exciting for to us. To me, that's really important. Yeah. I know when I go to New York or something, I was listening and, yep. and you don't want to miss it. Right, just like that. Yeah. Just like New York. <laughs> <laughs> Only on a friendlier level. <laughs> Yeah. So riding the bus, people really get to know the, their co-riders, don't they? Yeah, there's a real sense of community. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly the bus operators, you know, who, ri who drive the same routes every day, they know a lot of their riders, and a lot of the riders know each other. And so it's great. It's a great sense of community here. And you've expanded your territory a bit, haven't you? Or We've done a lot in the last <laughs> few years. Um, in 2016, we introduced Metro Breeze, which goes to Yarmouth and Freeport. Then in 2017, we added Brunswick. In 2018, we added the Husky Line, which, creates, uh, which is service between USM campuses and also downtown Gorham into, into Portland. And then we also added another Route 3, which is a crosstown route that goes from like Riverton to Westbrook to the main mall area and then continues on to Portland. We have done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> needs a car in this city, right? No, really. I mean, you know, um, and we're just going to be improving. Um, we're, we're going to be working on the Peninsula Loop, the downtown loop. Um, it takes a while. It gets you to where you want to go a lot of the times, but it takes a long time to do it. So we're taking a real good look at that and seeing how we can improve it. 
Oh, that's terrific. And, and right now, you know, we're talking about climate change and all that that is bringing to our world. And this is a way to help a little bit. Oh, yeah. Rather than one person in one car, um, take the bus. I mean, definitely take the bus, take the ferry, take the train, um, take transit, because it, it really does make sense, and it gets people out of their one-person cars. So. And the thing that you said, community, it does build community. You know, we are, we're always so busy with our little cell phones or our laptops, but getting on a bus with people, you, you start to recognize people as someone who's your neighbor. Oh yeah, you can meet some really cool people on the bus and if you don't feel like talking you can play with your <laughs> cell phone and no one's going to give you a hard time about it because you're not driving. <laughs> <laughs> well it's great and I know that um, there's more to come and we look forward to talking to you more about that. Absolutely. But thank you for being here today and for showing us these beautiful new buses. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, which one? Well, I'm with Matt Sulem, the membership and office manager for the Bicycle Coalition of Maine. Hi, Matt. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, it's great to have you here. It's great to be here. Helmet and bike and all. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, how long have you been involved with biking? Uh, biking, a long time, but uh, I've been involved with the coalition for about two years. Uh -huh. And what, what got you involved? Um, Honestly, moving here from, uh, I moved here from out of state, and I was really shocked to see all the distracted driving that goes on in this state, and uh, I really wanted to be a part of making a positive change uh, in that regard, and thankfully, uh, just a few days ago, they passed the ban on using cell phones and other electronic devices while driving, so that's a, a big victory. I think it's, it's, it's one of the best things we've done. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's... It keeps uh, pedestrians safe, it keeps cyclists safe, and uh, it also keeps other motorists safe. So tell me what the Bicycle Coalition of Maine is focusing on right now. Well, generally, you know, we're just trying to make the, the state safer for biking and walking. Um, we just wrapped Bike Maine, which is uh, our yearly week-long bike trip across a different area of Maine every year. So we, we were in the mid-coast uh, starting in Waterville. We went through Hope, Damascata, uh, Belfast, and Rockland. And uh, so that was a really successful event that brought 450 riders to Maine's mid-coast and got to experience the, the culture of all those nice towns. Wonderful towns. And was that a fundraiser for the Bike Coalition? Um, sort of. Uh, I mean, we're a nonprofit, so some of it goes back into uh, back into the coalition. but. We do grants with a lot of the money that we make, and so after each year's Bike Maine, we uh, give grants to five different communities um, to further their bike and pedestrian uh, infrastructure projects. Well, that's wonderful. I didn't know that. Yeah, and and we, I've been talking with everyone that with the climate change issues and mm -hmm. and New New York right now and the UN. Yep. Um, that's a big part of your marketing, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're really just, bikes are, they're, uh, they're green machines. They're there to uh, help people commute and put fewer cars on the road and, you know, free up parking spaces and just get more people out and active. And we've seen a huge increase in that number of people biking. That's what we're hoping for. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's you know it's little by little, uh, baby steps, but we're that's what we're that's what we're hoping for, just to get more people out biking and walking. Where are the dolls? Okay, well, I'm with Belinda Ray, city councilor and president of the board of Metro. Portland Metro. Yes. yes. Yes, welcome. Hi. Thank you very much for having me. Well, this is an exciting time. I know you live right on the peninsula, and you probably walk everywhere, ride your bike, take I a do. bus. I do. I rarely get in my car these days, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, I feel very lucky to be able to transport myself without an automobile so often. But the transportation in Portland is really coming up. Um, we have not only new infrastructure for bicyclists and also a very walkable community, but the public transportation in terms of the buses, the frequency, the routes being very effective at getting you where you need to go has all improved tremendously in the last three or four years. And the ridership is way up. 
The ridership is, and that's interesting because nationally ridership is down on public transit, but here in southern Maine we are bucking the trend and we are up. That's terrific. And I know uh, coming in from Falmouth, mm -hmm. the bikers mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah. And people are getting used to it now, yes. the drivers of the cars. Yes, so. they are. And I, w I had a great, um, I commuted, bike commuted to a meeting over um, just in Portland, but mm -hmm. across Tukey's Bridge today. Right. And it was amazing on my way back to see how many bikes and pedestrians there were. Mm -hmm. It made me so very proud of this just active and forward-thinking city. I think it's terrific, and, and with the climate change issues, mm -hmm. we need to be doing this. We absolutely do. And when you improve your public transit, your access to public transit, you touch on so many important things, and one of them is climate change, because mm -hmm. we're taking cars off the roads, we ha are having fewer greenhouse gas emissions, um, but we also touch on economic development because businesses tend to develop around transportation hubs where people can easily get to the organizations and the businesses. And you also hit on public health. Everyone who takes public transit is typically a pedestrian on either end of the trip. Mm -hmm. um, and we also give people better access to housing and jobs. So public transit is really key to addressing many of the challenges we face. And a lot of it is some people have never gone on the bus. And there's a fear there, I think. And, and you know, maybe to have little guides, little yes. volunteer guides to yes. hold their hand on a trip. Truly. I think it would be great to have a Portland adult ed class yes. about taking the bus. Yes. Um, because it is intimidating. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do things to make it less intimidating. You can now use an app on your phone. You can download the transit app and use that to be able to locate the bus or the ferry or the train and oh. know how far away they are from you. Oh. You can text at various stops to find out will the bus be here in one minute, five minute, ten minutes. Um, and then we're also trying to get different transit agencies to work together on the way that we collect fares mm -hmm. so that people will be able to pay with phones or pay with smart cards across different agencies. And we're also working to try to unify our schedules. So we know that the system needs to be more user friendly and we're certainly working to get it there so that more people will hop on the bus. And it's beautiful. This is a beautiful bus. Oh my gosh. And you have Wi-Fi. Yeah. And you can just sit here and the, it's, it's wonderful to have someone else drive you. Yeah. It's much nicer than my car. Yeah. I know, me too. <laughs> I know. And beautiful. I love the collaboration yes. with Casco Bay Lines, mm -hmm. with, you know, with all the people mm -hmm. you're working with, the Down yeah. Easter. Yeah. That's key to it making is. it work. It is, because there are seven transit agencies, and I could try to name them all, but I'm afraid <laughs> I'd leave somebody out. Yeah. Uh, but there are, there are seven, and so we really do all need to come together and make sure we're, we're always thinking of the user. Mm -hmm. So we have wonderful services within our silos, but we need to join those silos to make it so that users can easily cross over, because they don't, you don't care as a user. If you want to go from Portland to Saco, you don't care if you're taking different municipalities, different branches. Right. You just want to get there. Just want to get there. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's it's really exciting. It is very exciting. Thank Great you. turnout today. Right. Thank you for yeah. representing us. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much. And before we conclude our press conference, I just want to give a few more shout outs. Um, to the Portland Downtown Transportation Committee and our entire board of directors. Without our organization and our volunteer support, it, this just couldn't be possible. They worked tirelessly on transportation related advocacy in recent years, so I'm just very, very appreciative to them. Philip Kotievsky, if you've seen our Drive Less, Do More video, which is awesome and it's going to be launching on CW soon, um, he did an amazing job with that video, so check it out. To Adam McDonald, Portland Downtown's very own marketing director who brought this campaign to its final vision and he organized single-handedly today's transportation fair, so thank you. To our Drive Less, Do More models, Viva, Chamba, and Colin, who infused this campaign with life and made it reflect our beautiful community. To Port City Bikes for these gorgeous bikes today. And really to everyone who continues to make Portland an amazing place to live, work, and play, we thank you. The question I leave you with today is what will be your more? What will you do more of when you choose to drive less? 
We invite you to share your more with us on social media. We can't wait to see what we all can collectively achieve with our more. Thank you, everyone. Hey, Portland. Traffic can be bad. We know. Why not hop on the bus? Walk with friends? Hail a cab? Or take a ride? Once you drive less, you'll do more. So get out there and join the movement toward a happier, healthier Portland. Drive less, do more.